Welcome to the channel everyone. My name is Ian Yarwood and I am a lawyer here in Perth, Western Australia. Now for those of you who do not already know, there's a new book coming out about the various murders and suspicious deaths of backpackers on the Thai island of Koh Tao, which is also known as Death Island. The author of the book is a, a British lady by the name of Suzanne Buchanan and uh, she called Thailand home for something like 20 years, virtually all of that time on the uh, islands of Koh Tao and Koh Samui, which are both in the Gulf of Thailand. And she, for several years, was also the founder and the editor-owner of the Samui Times uh, online news service, which broke a number of very important stories about uh, deaths and uh, suspicious deaths and murders on the island and uh, several years ago she had to uh, basically leave Thailand which had been her home for two decades or more basically for her own safety. Now this uh, little video is really just a collection or consists of a collection of uh, my random thoughts about the book. I was uh, given a draft of it uh, just over a, a week ago and uh, this isn't going to be anything as fancy as a book review, but it will just have some of my random thoughts. And my very first first thought was that, you know, for just one book, there is a tremendous amount of information, very valuable information, which uh, cannot really be found anywhere, anywhere else. So uh, that was my very first thought. Uh, but uh, look, before I uh, jump into some of my other random thoughts, there are a lot of people, uh, you know, trolls, internet trolls around who will uh, make disparaging comments about Suzanne, and, uh, Suzanne Buchanan and, uh, and about myself. And uh, yeah, they will say things like, look, I haven't even been to uh, the island of Koh Tao. I've never even set my foot there. Uh, but in fact, uh, my background goes back a fair while. I was actually born in Southeast Asia. I've been to Thailand dozens of times. I've in fact been to virtually uh, every country in Southeast Asia. And, uh, you know, basically since the 1960s, I've been very interested in Southeast Asian history. And in fact, my own uncle was a professor of history. So it's something which is kind of in my genes. It's something I take a great deal of interest in. And I have created over 100 uh, videos on Koh Tao, about Koh Tao, and uh, the various deaths and uh, various crimes there. And in addition to that, I've um, attended three courts in Thailand. So I've become reasonably familiar with the Thai legal system. And in fact, my own practice here in Perth, Western Australia, does involve a significant element of criminal law because I'm often uh, investigating a lot of um, frauds, whether it's against investors or deceased estates or whatever. And uh, one of the very notorious uh, cases in Thailand uh, concerned the murders of Hannah Witheridge and David Miller and the two Burmese scapegoats who were convicted in that particular case were convicted on the strength of scientific fraud and this is something which I'm also very familiar with. So there will be a lot of people who will try to discredit me and say that I uh, don't know what I'm talking about but in fact I think most people would uh, understand that I'm actually quite uh, well qualified and uh, there's a lot that I know about the Gulf of Thailand um, that I knew before some of these critics were, were even born. Uh, I might be starting to show my age. Um, but look, yeah, some of the uh, thoughts about this book itself is, well firstly, as I've mentioned, Suzanne Buchanan lived and worked in this area of Koh Tao and Koh Samui for something like 20 years. So we're getting an insider's view. And one thing which is really refreshing about that is that even though she never trained as a journalist, as an insider, she's really got access to a lot more information and understanding than many journalists, even very well educated journalists who might visit the island very briefly, do some quick research and then uh, try to write an article or try to um, do a, a, a one minute um, you know, segment for a, a TV channel uh, about uh, a recent death on the island. And in fact, what 
often happens is that a lot of the journalists can come across as being very superficial. And in fact, I do remember one particular journalist with the BBC who referred to Koh Tao as a normally peaceful island. And in fact, uh, the island was anything but that. And uh, even though the journalist concerned was very highly educated and has written a lot of uh, uh, very informative material, not just about the death on, uh, deaths on Koh Tao, but upon, on other matters as well, every now and then uh, we can see from even very experienced journalists that uh, the research just isn't there uh, behind the articles and uh, the presentations that they, they produce. So anyway, getting back to Sue Buchanan, one of the things that struck me about the book is that it was certainly very graphic in parts. In fact, in the very first 10 pages of the book, we learn about a Burmese uh, fellow who was killed in a very brutal way and the death certainly wasn't, or the murder certainly wasn't uh, concealed. It was actually shown off to a number of people. Now, I don't want to steal uh, Suzanne Buchanan's thunder, and I'd like you to read the book for yourself, uh, but there is a very graphic uh, illustration about the murder of a Burmese man, and in fact, a lot of the Burmese have suffered uh, quite considerably on the island because of course the Burmese and the Thais are basically um, you know long time uh, medieval enemies of each other they'd be invading each other's country so there's a lot of animosity um, ancient animosity between the two uh, between the two nations now that was one thing which was um, brought up and it really illustrates very clearly just how extremely lawless the island of Koh Tao is. In fact, it's it's quite tribal, it's quite primitive uh, in the way um, that the outside law is really kept out and if things are just handled by um, the headmen on the island and the uh, often very corrupt, um, powerful families on the island and uh, there's not really a whole lot of place for uh, external law or uh, an influence of external authority. In fact, the a lot of the very wealthy families on uh, Koh Tao uh, exert a tremendous amount of influence on the powers that be in Bangkok. So it's a case where the um, uh, the people on Koh Tao are exerting influence on Bangkok rather than Bangkok exerting influence on Koh Tao. So that was one thing which came across. Um, and also within the first 10 pages there was a very graphic description of uh, the murder of a uh, Thai businessman and I'm not going to go into any details again I'd like you to read the book for yourself but it was a murder that which I certainly knew a reasonable amount about but uh, some of the graphic description uh, is something which can really take a reader's breath away now it's not all doom and gloom uh, there's a, certainly a great deal of doom and gloom within uh, the book and there is absolutely no happy ending to it either but uh, at some stages the, the, uh, the gloom and the misery is broken up by some humorous passages. There's one particular chapter, it's referred to as chapter 11 in the draft that I read and the headline or the heading of the chapter was less than legitimate procedures in Thailand and that's quite um, a humorous chapter, I mean it's, it's dark but it's humorous because uh, we see what happens when people try to be a bit too sneaky and a bit too corrupt and uh, how things go wrong so it can be uh, it can be quite amusing and that, that sort of breaks up some of the uh, the drama and some of the more sinister aspects of the book uh, there is a, a fair bit of detail in a lot of the uh, individual chapters quite often there, there will be a chapter dedicated to one victim of a murder or a, um, of an apparent murder and there can be uh, more than a reasonable amount of detail there's uh, some details about some deaths that I had been unaware of even though I have made over a hundred videos on um, on these topics in the last several years um, so there's all that extra detail there too so there's some of a few of my random thoughts another one of my random thoughts was that given that there is so much information in just one book it really is a very ambitious book if you like um, one of the things that 
I got to thinking afterwards was I wouldn't mind reading a, uh, a sequel to it because I know that Suzanne Buchanan is aware of other murders and other deaths on the island that are not touched upon. Um, it's one of those things, you know, it, it's a book, it's not an encyclopedia. It's a book that took Suzanne Buchanan several years to write, so do yourselves a favour and pre-order a copy through Amazon. I will have the links, as I said, uh, in the description below. And for those of you who don't already know, there is a three-part television series, documentary series, coming out on Sky Crime, which is due for release on the 6th of March 2022. And it's based very largely on the book from Suzanne Buchanan. They will have lots of interviews with uh, family members of many of the victims. And uh, the interesting thing with this series as well is I discovered that there is some very important material that wound up being left on the cutting room floor because they just had too much to squeeze into just uh, three episodes of one hour each. For example, I know of a Canadian lady by the name of Carla Bartel who was interviewed by a film crew in Canada for the series, but after having gone to all that effort, the uh, producers discovered that they just had too much material to include, so that was, uh, that was left out. But uh, anyway, so that's something to uh, look forward to as well, especially for those viewers who are in the United Kingdom. And of course, that, that may be released more widely at some stage in the very near future. So please look out that, for that as well. But as I said, do yourselves a favor and check out Suzanne Buchanan's book. And um, yes, just to remind everyone once again that I have spent a great deal of time in Thailand myself. And although some people will claim quite falsely that I've never stepped foot on the island of Koh Tao. I've actually been to uh, Koh Tao as well. I spent several days there and I've also been to other islands in the Gulf of Thailand and I'm familiar with uh, a lot of the politics and uh, a lot of the culture of the region. But thank you very much for watching until the very end. Bye for now.